Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today, we're going to take a look at how to choose the best PA speaker for your needs. There are tons of different PA speakers on the market, of course, and they all have features that recommend them and make them appropriate or perfect for a particular application. The trick is to choose the right one for what you need. So stay tuned. We'll be talking about PA speakers in general. We'll be looking at eight different PA speakers. Then you really want to stick around because we're going to be doing some real world testing with these eight speakers to see how they perform. So why are they called PA systems? Back in the day, PA systems were used for public address, meaning they were mainly used for announcements. And that term is sort of stuck around, even though today we mainly use them for bands and for playing back music and those sorts of things. But the idea is the same. You want to amplify the sound of your band, your speaker, your performer, your lecturer, whatever the application may be, so it's loud enough so the audience can hear what's going on. The trick to doing that is not only to make the sound loud, but also to keep the quality high so that words are intelligible with a speaker or with a vocalist, and so you can hear all the detail with the different instruments, so you can hear a clear mix when you're playing back music. Now, there are a number of different approaches to that. Today, we'll be looking at what are called active PA speakers, meaning they have the amplifier and all the electronics built right into the enclosure along with the speakers. So there's sort of an all-in-one solution. In fact, some of them, you can even plug a microphone straight into the back and use it as a complete sound system. There are a few different types of PA speakers. Today, we're looking at what are called full range speakers, meaning they can cover everything from the bass all the way to the highest treble. You can also get mid-high speakers that are oriented more towards the upper frequencies, the mid-range of the treble. And then there are subwoofers that reinforce the very low frequencies. They give you that boom and that thump on the bottom end. But again, what we're looking at today are full range speakers that cover the entire audio spectrum. There are a number of different things that you want to look at when you're choosing a PA speaker for your needs. And we're going to be looking at a number of those today. But you want to look at things like the volume level they can put out, and that's obviously an important one, but there are other things as well. There's what's called dispersion pattern, and that's basically the coverage that the speaker provides, and it's usually uh, defined as the width and the height. So you might have a 90-degree wide dispersion pattern and a 60-degree vertical dispersion pattern. The wider that pattern, the more coverage you're going to get across your audience, the narrower, the more focused the sound is going to be coming out of the speaker, and sometimes that can be a good thing. An important factor with a portable PA speaker like we have here is the weight and the format of the speaker. How well does it carry? Is the handle positioned well? And what is just the basic weight of the speaker? If you're going to be lugging it around, you want it to be as light as possible. And part of that is the construction. Some of the speakers here around me are made from different types of plastics, ABS or polypropylene. Others have plywood enclosures or even solid wood enclosures. The idea is to make the enclosure as basically inert as possible. You don't want it resonating and vibrating with the sound waves because that wastes energy, energy that could be going out to your audience. And so these different construction methods are designed to give you that inert, rigid enclosure without being too heavy. Another thing to look at is the mounting format for the speakers. Some of these speakers have fly points, meaning you can attach them to the wall or the ceiling. Most of them, if not all of them, are pole mountable, meaning you can put them on a speaker stand, which raises them up and allows them to project better out into the room. Some of them, the cabinets are shaped so that you can actually use them as floor monitors as well, so they become even more versatile. So that's something you'll want to look at as well, how you'll be using the PA speaker. Is it just a PA speaker? Are you going to be permanently mounting it? Is it portable? Will you be using it as a floor wedge? All these things are considerations. So with all that said, let's take a quick look at the eight speakers that are surrounding me here today. Let's begin with the Pioneer XPRS122, which is a speaker right here to my left. Now this speaker has 2000 watts of Class D power, a 12 inch woofer, and a one inch compression driver. It has four onboard DSP modes, so you can switch it to how you're using the speaker for speech, for music, and so on. Frequency response is from 48 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And we've got a plywood enclosure that comes in at just under 45 pounds. Next up, we have the JBL PRX8W here on my far left. This is a 1500 watt speaker with a 12 inch woofer and a 1.5 inch compression driver. We have onboard DSP processing and a dispersion pattern that's 90 degrees wide and 50 degrees vertical. An interesting feature is that it's Wi-Fi controllable using an app and the enclosure is made from birch. It comes in at just over 42 pounds. To my left, we have the JBL Eon 712. This is a 1300 watt active PA speaker with a 12 inch woofer and a one inch neodymium tweeter that's mounted into a JBL waveguide. That waveguide contributes to a wide dispersion pattern, 110 degrees horizontal and 60 degrees vertical. Frequency response is from 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. We have onboard DSP processing as well as an onboard three channel mixer. Additional features include Bluetooth as well as full true wireless stereo operation. The cabinet is made from polypropylene, which brings the weight in at right at 32 pounds. 
QSC K12.2 is here to my right. It has 2,000 watts of power, has a 12-inch woofer, and a 1.4-inch titanium compression driver. It features onboard DSP processing and a 75-degree horizontal dispersion. Frequency response is from 50 Hz to 20 kHz, and the enclosure is made from ABS, bringing the weight in at 39 pounds. The QSC CP12 has 1,000 watts of power, a 12-inch woofer, and a 1.4-inch compression driver. It has onboard DSP processing, a built-in mixer, and frequency response from 49 Hz to 20 kHz. The Electrovoice ZLX12BT, here to my left, has 1,000 watts of power, a 12-inch woofer, and a 1.5-inch titanium driver. There are four mode presets for different applications where you'd use this speaker, as well as built-in Bluetooth support. The dispersion pattern is 90 degrees wide by 60 degrees vertically, and it has a frequency response from 65 hertz to 18 kilohertz. It has a polypropylene enclosure and weighs just over 34 pounds. Here on my left, we have the Mackie Thump 212. It has 1400 watts of power, a 12-inch woofer, and a 1-inch compression driver. It has a built-in mixer and features feedback elimination as well as a ducking function that allows you to drop the level of background music when you're speaking. Frequency response is from 47 Hz to 23 kilohertz, and it comes in at a very lightweight 27.6 pounds. Last but absolutely not least is the Yamaha DBR12 with 1000 watts of power, a 12-inch woofer, and a 1.4-inch driver. Dispersion is 90 degrees wide by 60 degrees vertical. We have an onboard mixer as well as onboard DSP. Frequency response is from 52 Hz to 20 kilohertz. We have a lightweight enclosure, bringing it in at 34.8 pounds. So that's a very quick rundown of these eight PA speakers. They're all full range speakers, they're all active, meaning they have built-in power, and they're all set up for a variety of applications. But now, as promised, let's take a look at how they perform in the real world. So let's start out by looking at a factor that I think is so important with PA speakers, and that's really getting physical with it. What does it weigh? How easy is it to carry? How easy is it to put on a stand? We'll begin by looking at the Mackie Thump 212. And this is a lightweight speaker. It comes in at just 27.6 pounds. But one thing I really like about it is that it actually has three handles. So there's a handle here on the top for easy moving around. But there also are two side handles. And this makes it very easy to pick it up and carry it in a position that's going to be comfortable. But just as important as being able to carry it comfortably is you need to be able to get it up onto the stand. At 27.6 pounds, this one's not too bad. Grab the two side handles. Very easy to mount on the stand. Now let's look at the Electrovoice ZLX12BT. Now this one has two handles, one on the top and one on the side. When you pick it up by the top handle, it actually swings back, so it balances very nicely as you carry it. When we pick it up from the side, the handle is running the long way, so it hangs right in close to your body. It's actually very comfortable to carry. Again, nicely balanced. One other nice thing with the ZLX12BT is there's actually a security lock on the pole mount. There's a set screw there. Tighten that up with your fingers, and it locks it right onto the stand. Mounting it is easy because of those top and bottom handles. <laughs> Next up, we have the Pioneer DJ XPRS-122. Now, it's one of the heavier speakers in our roundup here today. It comes in at 44.6 pounds, but still very manageable. The handles are nicely placed. There's one on top and also one on the side. And the nice thing about the one on the side is it actually runs sideways like this rather than vertically. This allows you to position your hand facing forward for an easier carry. The way to grab this one is to use the side handle and the bottom. The JBL PRX812W has a single handle and it's positioned crossways on the enclosure. So when you pick it up, it's nicely balanced. Lifting this speaker onto the stand, it's easiest to grab the side handle and then the bottom of the enclosure. This speaker weighs 42.5 pounds, so it's a little on the heavier side as far as our roundup today goes. Still very manageable on the stand. Next up, we'll check out the QSC K12.2. It has two handles, one on the top and one on the side. Now, the one on the top, it's positioned right in the center, so the speaker really hangs well. It's balanced nicely. It makes it an easy carry. As far as the side carry, the handle's positioned a little farther back, but... Still hangs nicely balanced. 39 pounds, it's an easy carry. To mount this one on the stand, I recommend grabbing the side handle and then reaching from the bottom as well.
The Yamaha DBR12 comes in at 34.8 pounds. It has handles on both sides. So it's an easy carry, nice and balanced, but it's also an easy lift to get it on the stand. The QSC CP12 comes in at 30.3 pounds. It has a handle on top, hangs nice and balanced. You can also turn it sideways, brings it a little closer to your body. It's a little easier carry. There's also an indentation on the side, the sort of a lip that you can reach in and grab. But when I'm mounting this one, I like to grab it from the top and then from the bottom. At 32 pounds, the JBL Eon 712 is an easy carry. It has a top handle. There's also a side handle and you can turn either side toward yourself. It's equally balanced in either position. When you're mounting the Eon 712 on a stand, the way to go is to grab the side handle, use your other hand to guide the bottom of the speaker onto the stand. Now let's try a real, real world test. What we're gonna look at now is the volume that each of these speakers can produce. So we're gonna run program material. We're gonna run a song into these speakers, have them each play back, and I'm gonna set them up so that each speaker is at the maximum volume we can get without clipping the input and without engaging any limiters or any of that sort of thing on the amplifiers. So we're gonna try and get the, the clean output at its max level without any of the additional features engaged. Now I've got an SBL meter here. I've got an Earthworks microphone that we're gonna to use to record these tracks, not necessarily as a reference, but just so you can kind of hear what's going on. Let's see what really happens when we crank the sound up through these speakers. I got my earplugs, let's go.
So very interesting comparing these eight different speakers. Not only do they each put out a different volume level given a particular input, they all sound a little different as well. They have different feature sets. There are some really interesting things going on with some of these speakers. For example, the K12.2 has a locking power connector. The rest of them don't. Uh, the PRX800 has a fan on board for keeping things cool. So there are other features that are involved here as well. But the main things you want to look at, you want to look at the size of the speaker. So you make sure that you're choosing the appropriate size, a 12-inch woofer, 15-inch woofer, whatever it might be, the amount of power that you have so you have plenty of clean headroom, the features that you need on board. But it's also important to consider things like how heavy is the speaker? How easy is it to pick up and move around? How easy is it to put on a speaker stand? All those physical aspects, if you will, they all play into how well the speaker is going to fit with your particular application and use. We have many different resources available here at Sweetwater for you. First and foremost, you should contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. They have in-depth knowledge of all these speakers and access to tons more information and can really help inform you as you make your decision. You should also stop by Sweetwater.com. All these speakers are listed there as well as many others, and you can get a lot of information from Sweetwater.com. And speaking of, be sure to visit the news and research page there as well. We have articles on live sound, on choosing gear, all sorts of information is available for you there. So tons of resources from Sweetwater for you. And I do have to make one more shout out. We were using a Gator Frameworks GFW SPK 3000 speaker stand. Really cool stand, easy to set up, lightweight, and it has a built-in lift assist feature that makes it very easy to change the height of the speaker. Really does it for you automatically. I hope you found this video useful as you search for the best speaker as a solution for your live sound applications. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this or start at Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.